Hello subscribers, welcome to our special presentation, The History of Black Women, The Mother God, in recognition of Black History Month, we bring you this special presentation of the history of black women and their influence on the world. We will go over a few short facts that you probably wasn't aware of. The history of black women. Black women were the first to inhabit the planet. All humans come from the first black mother and black women set up kingdoms on various continents in the world. Many of you already know that the black one, that black women were the first to inhabit the planet. All humans can trace their genetics back to the first mother of humans. Black women went on to explore various parts of the world. Later in history, their kingdoms were destroyed by patriarchs. In ancient era, Royal bloodlines came through the womb of the black woman. An example of royal bloodlines being implemented by the European patriarchs can be seen in the documentary Hidden Colors, when they discuss Moorish royalty. In that time, there was no word for biracial, so the term Moorish is being used to describe the children of these European patriarchs. Rural biracial family members. When I saw the documentary Hidden Colors, I couldn't help but ask myself, where are the mothers of these biracial men and women? Why was it so important for the documentary to mention these individuals? Why were the European men integrating more children into European nobility? Instantly, I remember reading the book, Destruction of Black Civilization by the author Chancellor Williams. He mentions African women being kidnapped or abducted, but neglects to give full details. This motivated me to do some research on each Moorish individual who were integrated into European nobility. I was not disappointed. Alexander Pushkin is known as the black father of Russian literature. He was brought to Russia from Africa, born into nobility. Though there is no mention of his mother, it is said that Alexander's great-grandmother to be an African enslaved African. Many of these children didn't identify with the culture of their African mothers. However, it is said that Alexander Pushkin was very proud of his Moorish roots. Joseph Bolognay. Bolognay was the son of an enslaved African matriarch named Nanon. She was said to be the most beautiful woman on the island of Guadalupe. Joseph Bolognay was known as the Black Mozart and rose to the top of French society. He possessed musical and sword fighting talents. This was an interesting and very fun fact to learn that Queen Charlotte is the third generational great grandmother of Queen Elizabeth and was a descendant of Margarita Sosa, black noble branch of the Portuguese royal house. Alessandra de Medici. Historians say that Alessandra was a descendant of African matriarchs. This information was divulged by the servants working in the Medici home. Alessandra is regarded as the first black head of state in modern Western history. Alexander Dumas. Alexander Dumas was born in Haiti. His father was a French nobleman and mother was of African descent. Alexander was the highest ranking black man on the European continent, a general in the French army and a writer of, he also is the writer of the Three Musketeers. The reason we see African presence on nearly every continent is the first mothers of civilizations migrated out of Africa they were excellent at vegetation, cultivation, 
That is one reason why archaeologists and scientists always find uh, women remains women remains in ancient era. Women were genesis in spirituality. These women had a special connection with earth. They were healers, seers, and prophetess. The first mother is responsible for giving birth to the first man to ever walk the earth. Now the story has been morphed into the story of Jesus. Although it is difficult to miss that man is made in the very image of woman. In ancient, in ancient times or early uh, history, women did not need men to become pregnant. They went through a process uh, or a stage called Parthenon Gen Genesis. African matriarchs migrated far east into India and Asia. India and Asia have linguistic and cultural links. Modern evidence show that African matriarchs left this culture and fashion among the Buddhist priests of Tibet. The Hindu gods of India and Egypt have very strong similarities. Egyptians insinuate there was contact between Egypt and India. However, if someone was to ask a priest or a priestess for the reason for these similarities, they would probably respond, we possess the same gods in our blood, and our ancestors brought, brought them to India when they migrated here 4,000 years ago. Matriarchs in America were called mound builders. Christian and Spanish and French explorers documented evidence of matriarch culture in the Americas. Queen Khalifa is a good example. Her names mean God rules. She ruled the areas of California and the Baja Islands. She was a commander of a fleet of ships that carried her to various islands and lands. DNA also reveals that Australia Aborigines belong to the first modern humans that left Africa between 50,000 and 70,000 years ago. They are one of the most indigenous, oldest indigenous people outside of Africa. They were a collective of 1,000 to 3,000 women, matriarchs, that produced a diversity of aborigines just like in Africa. Aborigines also tell the stories about coming to Australia across the sea. You are probably asking yourself what happened to our great mothers. With the proper study of history, you will find there was a gender war. These gender wars began to dismantle the spiritual practices of matriarchs. The matriarchs were movers and shakers in the, in the ancient world. They were the spiritual power and advisors and medicine women in the ancient world before the Vatican was even thought about. In fact, many of the religions you see today were first founded by the spiritual concepts of black women who were the, who were the world's first mothers to humans. Their spiritual practice were divided and created into patriarch religions we see today. Many women were killed and accused of being witches if they tried to continue their spiritual practices. So what, what happened to the matriarch culture on the, and why did they decline? There were gender wars, there were religious wars, and finally there was genocide. Gender wars. First, men gained control of women's spiritual structure. Second, they replaced women deities with men deities being superior. Religions began to take root in the minds of men. The gender wars started in Africa. As a small culture of patriarch men grew in Egypt. Egypt was the first place that began to shift the power from the queen mother. Egyptian patriarchs began replacing women deities with men deities. Then they created stories that men came from the semen that dropped on the ground instead of 
coming from the womb of the first mother. Many Afrocentric writers hide these facts. They would tell us that the black woman is God, but fail to give details on the statement. Although pharaohs continued to use women to set up their bloodlines for nobility, there was no other way in order to claim royalty. The offspring must come from the womb of the black matriarchs. This went on to be adopted around the world as patriarchs set up their own no nobility. Later, when women deities were replaced by men deities, religion began to take root in the minds of men. Thanks for watching our video. If you're interested in knowing more about this subject, you can find the, this book, Matriarch to Patriarch, on Lulu or click our link. Thank you.